So we're back. We have undercoated with Chaos Black or Matte Black and then Xenophil primed with Grey Seer. See, we've got a nice bit of shadow going under there, under the wings, under the armpits, um, in the, under the legs and things, under the tail as well a little bit. But they're all, all nice and bright on the top. Still a little bit of recessed shadow, which has worked out well. So also uh, yeah, giving a bit of shadow on the, uh, the base as well, which looks good. So what I plan to do, let's move it out of the way, is going over all the skin areas with the silicon grey, and then we're going to give it a dry brush with Skaven Blight Dinge, which I cannot find on my paint rack at the minute, but it's there somewhere. And then uh, possibly uh, Administratum Grey, and then pick out some of the details with um, maybe something like Carrack Stone, maybe something like that. But we're going to concentrate on getting uh, Basilicon Grey over everything first. All right, so th this is going to include the membranes, the spines. We're not going to do the horny bits and the teeth and the claws we're not going to do them we are just going to do skin and fleshy bits all right let's go So now that the uh, Basilicon Grey, yeah, Basilicon Grey has dried, we've got nice, good coverage, no excessive pulling in any places, which is good, especially around the uh, spines on the wings, which I was a little bit worried about, but it seems to have worked out okay. So, pleased about that. I'm going to take a large makeup brush, make sure it's all nice and uh, ready to go. What I'm going to do is dry brush. So I'm scaven like dinch. Um, yeah, I'm going to dry brush that all over the um, the skin and the flesh parts. Where we've been with the silicone and grey <coughs> tissue, just to wipe off the excess. Give it a good shake. Make sure it's all mixed. Do I want this big brush or do I want a slight? I'm going to go for a slightly smaller one. It's quite a bit smaller, like half the size actually, but still nice and soft. Load up the brush. I 
work it into the bristles. I'm sure most of you know how to dry brush. <coughs> go. There we go. Uh, right, I'm going to start with a tail just to see how it goes. I'm going to give this a little light dry brush to start with just to see what it looks like. I'm not expecting major changes because it's a very similar colour. Just want to give it a bit more definition, is that the right word, I suppose. I'm trying to do small circular motions so we're not just going with the grain, not just getting the uh, raised edges all the time. Get under there. Now, although we avoided all the uh, like armor panels and the skulls and all the other parts apart from the skin last time, I'm, try, I'm going to try and avoid it this time as well. Obviously, it's going to be a bit harder doing a dry brush because it tends to be a bit more messy. Just load up the brush again. And it's not too strong, which is kind of what I want. I don't want it too strong. Yeah, they're going to try and avoid the uh, armor panels, the cloth, all the other the bits that we don't want grey. If we do, inevitably we're going to get them on there. So. I'm not going to stress too much about it. If it's too excessive, then I'll uh, touch up with a little bit of grey seer. But it shouldn't be too bad with this light dry brush. Across the, uh, the knuckles. That hand has so many rings on it. It's almost like um, Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's got, let's have a count. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight eight rings on one hand it's impressive just do some circular motions on the body try and get into the recesses a bit not into the recesses but underneath the panel a little just top up the brush a bit <coughs> always add more dry brushing on later so I'd rather have a much lighter dry brush and be able to go back and add more later than not uh, be too too much and not be able to take it off and there his face Coming up all right, isn't it? Uh, we need to get in there a little bit, don't we? Pine that arm. Yeah, not a bit of the body. Hmm. Get in there a bit. A bit more on the brush. After we've done this, we're going to go with a light dry, a very, very light dry brush of Administratum Grey. So with the membranes here, I'm just going to try and go down like that. Maybe musculature do a bit more. Circular motion. I'm not sure if that's catching or not. Support it. Hmm. Not sure if that's doing anything. Let's 
It's not the brush, but it's too far back up near the ferrule, which isn't what we want. We want it near the front, obviously, so it comes off on the model. Now, I am by no means an expert at dry brushing. I mean, look how much paint I'm wasting. <clears throat> right, let's carefully. That's better, it's catching it now. Still only subtle, which is what we want. So this wing, Do the inside of the wings. Put them on the brush. These are just um, cheap, very cheap uh, makeup, makeup brushes, so they can be used and abused. Right, we're going to get on the inside of this wing first. I don't know, <clears throat> after I've finished building this and painting this, I don't know what model to do, what models to do next. Now obviously we've got the 10 chosen and we've got the three uh, pheridons? Yeah, pheridons. Um, obviously going to build all of them, but I don't know which one to do next. Kind of leaning towards the chosen because there's more of them that's going to give me um a bit of an incentive to get them done so i can get the uh the ferrod onto the ferrodons because although 10 isn't a lot it's still more than three so i'd rather get the, not the hard bit i mean i don't know how hard they're going to be but they're not they might should be fairly easy to paint i would have thought it's just armor right um yeah, so that's that's my thinking. I'm gonna go chosen next after this, and then the three pheridons. All right, I think I think we're okay there with the wings and the first dry brush. Now. Let's close that up. <coughs> Give it a wash. Although they're only cheap, they're still going to keep them good. Try and get it out of the ferrule a bit. Get some brush soap on this. Now, I think on the next high right, on the next dry brush, I will go over it with this big brush. That's uh, it's going to be a lot lighter, it's going to be a lot softer. Away. So, hopefully, it will give me a nice soft result. All right, so we've got the administra administratum grey. Um, yeah, we're just going to give this a, a light going over. 
start with the tail because that's where we started last time and then hopefully by the time we get to the rings the little bits that aren't dry should be dry that's very odd what is that hmm. a bit of a strange bit of a pink going on there so we'll do the same again we're just going to get a little bit on our brush this time just on the tip we're just going to work it into the bristles same as we did before and this being a bigger brush should be a much subtler result should so we start with the tail again yeah that's a lot subtler i'm just gonna gonna dust it This side. Yeah, it's just catching the edges nicely, just like we want. Let's go in the face. Like I said earlier, we're going to go over. Uh, the prominent points like knuckles, um, sharp edges with a bit of uh, carrick stone, I think I said. I think that's probably going to be the best bit. It just brings a bit of warmth to it as well. See, this is a lot subtler, isn't it? Yeah, it's really picking up on them spiny edges, isn't it? Yeah, the membranes. A little bit heavier there, but that's okay. Still, still a light dry, dry brush. These spines. Now we are running out of paint a bit, so let's top up. We don't need a tiny amount now, look, because there's not a lot left to do. Work it into the bristles again. You can barely see it on the tissue paper there, look. So that's what we want. Still take it nice and slow. On the inside. Now, I know the uh, uh, Games Workshop showed previews of the other Slave to Darkness units, so we're getting in um, a command sprue basically for the <coughs> Knights of Chaos, which look really nice. The musician and the, uh, the banner bearer. And we're also getting a aspiring champion, I think. His face a little. I think, I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Again, the clean brush. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think it's an aspiring champion. Um, which looks very reminiscent of the the old model that they did back in, um, I want to say the early 2000s. It might even have been 2000 itself, I'm not sure. But yeah, really looking forward to that. <clears throat> right, so 
Next, I'm going to finish off these wings with a um, coat of skeleton hoard across the membranes. Now, I was thinking that a uh, that this dries quite smudgy, so maybe thin it down with some medium would be the best bet. Now, I can't. See you at a minute, my palette paper. Da, 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 da. Can't see any palette paper, so this will serve as a palette for now. Uh, right, medium, where is my medium? Over there. Give that a good shake as well. I'm thinking of doing this literally one to one just to make sure it flows nice and easily and doesn't get any strange pooling effects going on. Move that out of the way one second. So we got size free brush, nice and big, nice lot of control, and then we're gonna go one, two. Four. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four. Is that a mix? Make sure there's no weird streaky bits. Good. Literally just going to go over the membranes. Careful not to get it on anything else. Just on the membranes. Now you can see already this is going to pool quite a lot. So, I mean, I've just gone over one of the uh, weird little chains there, but that's not going to matter too much. Um, yeah, pooling. If, if it pulls, we'll just have to try and soak it up the best we can. As we go along, we don't want it, we just kind of want to tint it a little bit like that. So that's kind of what we're looking for. I want to get it looking different to the rest of the body. Obviously, the wings on this are going to be the prominent. Uh, prominent bit that catch your eye. When it's on the tabletop. So I just want to take a bit of time, go over each of the membranes, make it look very what is that little thing there? Bit of dust. <clears throat> I'm gonna do each membrane in turn and then I'll come back and mop up any pool in move it to where we want it to land. The, these wings are so detailed. Beautiful thing. Now, with all the uh, wing wing brains done, we've got a nice, nice colour contrast between the two. They're still drying at the minute, so we'll leave them be. I've also gone round, carefully picked out some of the skulls dotted around the base and on his hips. There's one on the wing here as well. Um, yeah, so they've got a nice uh, skeleton hoard with them. So we'll put that away. And now what we're going to do is 
take some black templar and we're going to go over all the talons and organic spikes we're not going to do the horns just yet we're just going to do the spikes on the wings claws on the hands and feet um yeah that's what we're going to do for now i'm not going to do the tip of the tail just yet either I've got a size one brush i think yeah size one brush and we're going to start what we always try to do at the bottom just carefully going around not trying not to get it onto the skin because i'm about there with the skin quite happy with the way it's turned out so i don't want any more interaction with it i will be going over the uh the membranes with maybe like a a really light dry brush of skeleton horde maybe we'll see what it looks like when it's dry that's my intention anyway carefully go around all these spikes claws any organic looking bit so we're going to leave the teeth and the horns for the time being we may come back and do them later not quite sure how i'm going to paint them just yet so yeah we'll leave them for the time being and uh, crack on with these now i've tried to start at the bottom and work my way up each leg uh, just so I don't miss any to be honest it's um, quite a spiky model as you can see so there is quite a risk of missing some I'm going to try not to miss any and I can always come back with the Black Legion at a later point just to pick it up and there's a spike right in there on the back of his ankle maybe I suppose that's his ankle or because it's not his knee is it uh, I will be doing a tail with this as well actually so all these little spikes are going to just catch along the tail So after a small amount of deliberation, I've decided I am going to do the horns, the teeth, and also these teeth and spikes coming out of the, uh, the uh, armour. I'm going to do them in Black Legion as well to match in with the rest of the, the, uh, the horns, spikes, things like that. Um, now the wings have dried. You can also give them a a uh, like dry brush of what is that what flavor on flesh we're going to do it with screaming skull so first thing i'm going to do is apply the black temper let that dry hit the uh the membranes with the screaming skull and um i'll go from there see what's next
So that's the, um, the horns and the spikes all done. So if I get rid of that and put that Black Legion away. <coughs> Take some of our screaming skull. Get a bit of our tissue paper again. Um, I'm going to use the big dry brush, the large one of the two in this one, just because I find it's a softer dry brush, which is kind of what I'm looking for on this. I only want a slight to catch the uh, very raised edges of the membranes. So this is going to be a very, very light dry brush. Like I said before, you can always build up on the dry brush. You can't take it away. So I don't know if you can see that very well on camera, but there's very, very little coming off the paintbrush, which is what I want. And then we carefully just catch them raised edges. See that? It's just coming up just enough to say it's there. To each part in turn, to each membrane, each wing. That's an awkward one to get to, isn't it? just realised that that's not the best viewing angle for the camera. I've got most of my hand. You can kind of see just brushing it backwards and forwards, nice and light. Very little paint on the brush. Just going to touch there as well. Just to tie it in, a touch more paint on the brush to the inside of the membranes. <coughs> Again, a very light dry brush. See that just catching. Just realised as well that I've missed two very large spikes on the wings. I'll show you them in a second once I get this bit done. And this being a large dry brush, it's catching the spines a little as well, which, to be honest, doesn't look bad. So I do that. <coughs> That's that. I don't know if you can see the difference there, but that's made a big difference in person. It's um, very subtle, but it's enough to say it's a bit different from the rest of the skin being that very grey. And then you've got the membranes being that much lighter. So the uh, two spikes that I missed actually just here can you see that one there one there both sides so quickly go over them um what else can i do uh, i've got the tongue to paint i'm gonna hit that with i was thinking a shayish purple but 
looking through my paint collection, I don't actually have Shoei's purple. I do have Magos purple. So what I'm going to do is mix a tiny bit of Magos purple in with a tiny bit of Black Templar and uh, darken it down like that and see if that gives me a nice effect. So yeah, that is our plan. And then I think after that, we're going to have all the organic parts done, base coated. Skin highlighted, wings highlighted. We need to highlight the the um, face a little bit more. We need to highlight the the uh, the bony parts, um, and then we start on the armor. But yes, let's uh, finish off the uh, the black templar on the on these two spines that I've missed, and get the tongue and the mouth painted. So that's the uh, the spines and the mouth done. The mouth, I think, is going to need a, another coat of Magos Purple because it's a very translucent colour compared to the uh, the Black Templar. don't know if you can quite see that, but it's very, very translucent. So, yeah, brighten that up a touch. Um, I do believe that is all the organic parts done now. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the trim on the armour. Uh, we have Retributor Gold, and I'm going to go around with Trim and then hit the flat panels with Iron Hand Steel and tidy up the trim as I go, and vice versa if I need to, and uh, see how we get. I will start with the, uh, the legs, I do believe. Just looking at these parts by the, the knee here. Do they want to be gold? Does a skull face want to be gold? Yeah, I might just have a quick check of the um, the box art to see see what they've done there and use that as a bit of a guide. But I'm going to start with the bottom of the legs, work my way up, and yeah, this is going to take some time, but hopefully it'll be worth it in the end. That was, <coughs> excuse me, a mammoth task. Well, I've got all the uh, the trim as far as I can see done. Uh, there might be some other bits, like some of the symbols on the wings and on the belt and things that I might want to pick out in gold later. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is go round with iron hand steel and get all the flat plates and the sword and any other chains, because definitely want to chain silver, so that would be nice and easy. Um, yeah, go over the rest of it now and try and pick out all the silver bits. This is going to be another mammoth task, but 
it's good. It's starting to come together now. It's looking really nice. I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. So yeah, let's get to it. So again, that was a mammoth task, uh, but we've got all the silver details in. I just realized, just looking at it and talking to you, I've missed this chain here, but not too worried about that because I want to paint the robes first before I do that. Um, I'm gonna go over that with a uh, flesh terrors red, I think. Um, yeah, that was, that was a task, but, doesn't it look cool? Doesn't it look very nice? Uh, obviously very flat at the minute, but you can see now the details. You can see what's going on. It's, um, yeah, lots of little trinkets. I, when you do this yourself, I would definitely take your time with that bit, going over all the metallics, however you're painting them, because there's so many little rings, little trinkets. I, I know I've missed the... Uh, the rings on this hand, I'm going to go over them in gold again to make them pop a bit more from the hand. Um, yeah, I'm going to hit that chain after I've done the uh, the loincloth. Um, yeah, it's it's coming along very nicely. Very pleased with how this is progressing. Right, so I'm going to get some fresh terrors red. I'm going to go over that loincloth, get that done next. So we're going to go with Flush Terrors Red, got some Flush Terrors Red contrast and we're going to go over the, the tabard with this, both sides, front and back. Um, I don't think there's any other cloth anywhere else on this, so it's just going to be the tabard. And I've realised all the while I've been painting. Now as you can see I'm right handed, I usually hold the model in my left hand and put the paint pot on the right so I'm not crossing over all the time and I've realized while I've been painting this that's exactly what I've been doing I've been crossing over all the time so I'm going to put the paint pot there just to make it a bit easier for myself so I'm not crossing over because I always find as well I'm always at risk of when I'm getting into small fiddly places, I get the bit that I need to get. And then as I draw away with a paintbrush, 
I don't really look at what I'm doing and end up painting somewhere I don't want to paint which is generally what happens for me luckily I don't think I've done it too much on this one I noticed I've done it a couple of times on horns right I've even done it there a little bit that's just because we've got too close on that um belt buckle I guess I guess it's a belt buckle a very fancy belt buckle and carefully get this around all the bits that we've already painted it is a fantastic model very pleased with it now <clears throat> um although hopefully this is going to be one video in fact what i might do is do it in two um like getting the base coats on like this and then highlighting it maybe we'll see because being the casual painter this is only happening happening very casually so obviously these came out on the saturday and i have put it together and got it undercoated and got it to this stage in painting <coughs> and today is now the following thursday so not even a week has gone past yet which to be honest for me is amazing i generally don't work this quick So, um, yeah, it, it might be obvious on the video, I'm not sure. Hopefully, it'll be a bit seamless. And um, hopefully, it'll all come together nicely. Good start to a YouTube channel. Yeah, I do realise as well that sometimes you can't actually see what I'm doing, especially when I'm holding it like this, because of the way the angle is. But at the minute, I don't have a great camera set up. So I'm not too worried. There we go. There we go. So yeah looks pretty good i am very pleased with this and, uh, uh, what, what have we got left to do so we've got all the old gun bits done i think what i might actually do is go over the skulls again with um skeleton horde because they are quite pale i think where i've watered not watered it down but thinned it down with the contrast it's made them very translucent which was all right for the wings. That was perfect for the wings. That was exactly what I wanted. But for the uh, the skulls, a little bit more uh, definition in them. And I did completely miss the top of this one. I thought he was wearing a helmet, but he's not. It's just got like a cage around his head. There is a half a face in there as well. What I'm going to do is go over that the skeleton horde. I'm going to highlight it up same as the rest of the skulls when we get around to that bit and then maybe put some plague fair what plague bearer flesh or something like that over it just to gross it up a bit it is meant to be a severed head obviously now i haven't done like the the cloth parts around his uh around his waist like holding the, there's like bits of rope and stuff holding the uh skulls in place 
that has um, straps holding his armour on, which is a very cool little detail. But I haven't done them either, mainly because I don't really know what to paint them. I might just hit them up with uh, do, 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 do. a bit of snake bite leather. Is it still called snake bite leather? The snake, the, the leather contrast. Yeah, snake bite leather. Go over it with a, yeah, snake bite leather. Get all like the um, little bits of rope and whatnots holding the skulls. And the, um, the armor plates in place. I think they can be highlighted up quite nicely as well. <coughs> the skull on this tabard. Try not to get the red now that we've gone over that. And the one on his wing. All the way up there. Like that. That will suffice, I think. So that's our skulls re uh, reshaded. That is our metals done, our organic parts done, so the flesh, the claws, the bones, the metallics done, the armor done. Um, is there any bits that I've missed that need base coating apart from what I've just discussed? I think, I don't think it would do. Excuse me. I think what I need to do now is go over my armour with a colour that I cannot see and I cannot remember the name of. Hmm. Where is it? It's going to be one of them ones that I know it, it, what it's called exactly when I see it, but seeing it is going to be the problem. Ba, 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 ba. Is it Targor Rage, Rage Shade? I haven't used it yet, uh, but I can't see it either. So what I'm going to do is press pause for a minute and come back when I find it, because it might not be in front of me. It might be elsewhere. So I'll be back in a second. So, turns out, I completely suck at buying paint. So, this is Targol Raid Shade, and this is the paint I thought was Targol Raid Shade when I picked it up from the local store the other day. And, yeah, I had not seen this one before, I'm only in the store, and they're not that similar. It's got a hint of red to it, but, yeah, I didn't read the part properly when I picked it up. So now I have three lovely pots of Carabao Crimson, but I also have the Targor Red Shade now. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go over all the armour, so anything metallic, all the gold, all the silver, uh, on the sword, on the chains, on the armour, everything with the Targor Red Shade. This will hopefully give me the desired effect I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to use, what size brush am I going to use? I think I'm going to use a size 2. Yeah, a size 2. Um, yeah, go over all the armour panels, all the metallic bits, and hopefully this will point out any bits that I've missed as well. I've just seen behind his head, I don't know if you can see that, behind his head on that armour pad that I've missed an under bit. So I'm going to pick that out first before I hit that. But I'm going to start at the bottom, work my way up, when I get to that bit, I'll switch over to metallics and let it dry. But there's plenty of other metallic bits to go at in the meantime. So here we go.
So I've gone over with the uh, Targoil Raid Shade. I've picked out the, the bits that I missed. I also missed the uh, the demon face on the top of the, the forearm there. Um, so yeah, now I've gone all that. I've gone over them with Targoil Raid Shade as well. I'm going to go over all the armor again and all the metallics again with uh, Agrax Earth Shade. So I'll put that back. <coughs> Find our Agrax, which is not that one. Oh, there we go. Um, Agrax Earth Shade. So yeah, we're gonna hit it with the Agrax Earth Shade, and um, yeah, get some nice coloration going on on there. All right, here we go. <laughs> 